Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to show you how you can get highly detailed prints like this one here off of your Ender 3. So the Ender 3 is a super popular machine. Just looking at my affiliate links, a lot of you have bought an Ender 3. So I thought I'd make a video about it, how you can improve your detail accuracy. To start off, I just started with my regular settings, 0.15 mm layer height, standard 0.4 mm nozzle, and this is the print I got. It's quite respectable and it already looks pretty good, but you can really see if you look closely that there are some details that didn't print at all and you can see the layer lines very, very clearly. So I set out to change some settings, change some other parameters to get some highly, highly detailed prints. So the first thing I did was just drop down the layer height. I started out with 0.15 mm layer height and then I immediately went down to 0.07 mm, which is kind of the minimum I would go as you don't, don't want to go that much lower otherwise there is not enough material and you're smearing around too much. For many prints that's going to be enough and you can get some really nice uh, detailed prints. Of course your print time also increases dramatically if you reduce the layer height like this. The original print took around 25 minutes uh, and this print already took around 50 minutes, so basically double the time since it's double the amount of layers. Then the next step I took was replacing the nozzle. The standard 0.4mm nozzle is great as a balance between speed and accuracy, but if you want to get some like small but highly detailed prints like this keycap, then you might want to consider dropping down to a 0.2mm nozzle. You can get alternative nozzles super cheap from China. I bought this pack with a whole different set of nozzles starting at 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. 0 0.6, 0 0.8 that you can experiment with for like a dollar or two. So that's really easy to get a hold of. Then to swap out the nozzle you just want to heat up your extruder, back the filament out a little bit and then use ideally a socket head or worst case some pliers to loosen up the nozzle. If you're using pliers please be really careful that you don't mess up your printhead. Also be careful since it is really hot at this point. Then after you unscrewed it, if you want to be on the safe side, you can let your extruder cool down. Then once it is cool, start to screw in your new nozzle and then once it is in almost all the way, heat it up again and then tighten it once it's hot. If you're a little bit careful, you can also get away with screwing it in to begin with a little bit by hand really quickly before the heat transfers into it but you have to be really really careful as you can burn yourself doing that. And then you can just use the ideally a socket head or a wrench, worst case some pliers uh, to tighten the nozzle back up. You want to make sure that it is nice and snug. And if your thread length of the nozzle is different than the original thread length of the nozzle you also want to make sure that your PTFE tube is touching your nozzle still. To make sure of that, you can tighten your nozzle almost entirely, but then back it like a quarter turn back off and press down onto your PTFE tube a lot. You might have to press down on the PTFE coupler a little bit to release it and it works best if you don't have any filament in it. And then once it is backed up against the nozzle, then you can tighten it the last quarter turn and it's going to be nice and snug and that means that there is no filament leaking out. Then with the nozzle changed you just have to remember to also change it into your printed parameters in the slicer. You can slice it again the model with the new nozzle diameter and print. And as you can see you immediately get a lot more detail as the smaller nozzle can get into tighter spaces and just print details that are smaller than 0.4 millimeters. But when you get down to the 0.2mm nozzle and the 0.07mm layer height, you can look super close till you can see the layer lines. You can also see that you start getting into the limitations of the printer itself instead of just your nozzle and print parameters. You can really start seeing the different inaccuracies that come from just 
the printer moving around, having a little bit of slop, maybe the nozzle not being super duper precise and all that stuff. So there is a limit on how far it makes sense to go. I find that 0.07 millimeters layer height and a 0.2 millimeter nozzle is really the limit. I also tried going to 0.04 millimeters layer height, but it didn't really improve anything. Uh, if anything, it made it worse. It just mirrored around a lot more. So it's not really worth it. And I wouldn't go smaller than 0.2 millimeter nozzle either, as then you really increase your risk of clogging as on even the smallest particles that would easily pass through a different nozzle will get stuck. But I think if we look side by side between the first print and the last print, we already can see a huge improvement. And this, in my opinion, is a very, very usable keycap. And by the way, if you like this model, I'm gonna have it linked down below on Thingiverse. I used some two different Thingiverse models and used Mesh Mixer to put it together and printed it then. I'm gonna have a video about Mesh Mixer really soon, as I think it's a very, very powerful program that I've kind of disregarded it for a long time, and it's actually quite simple to use as well. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. Also, if you don't have an Endo 3 yet, you can buy one with the links down below. It is very, very affordable, and as you can see, it is quite a good printer. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check me out on social media. Thanks for watching and until next time.